that, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. And I'm going to first just shut down Photo Mirage, which you're staring at. Oops, one second. Okay. I'm going to shut this down and I'm going to just launch it from the beginning by clicking on the Photo Mirage application on my desktop and so that you can see the full first use experience. So it launches very quickly um, and the first thing you're greeted with is this welcome screen. We call this the welcome guide. It's packed with helpful content for you to get started and be successful with Photo Mirage, including a what's new tab where you can find blog posts, you can find some of our new tutorials. It's dynamic, so we're always updating it, and there's always something new to check out. And we have um, an exclusive tutorials tab where you can see all of our tool tutorials um, that should be very helpful. But as you're going to see in a moment, Photo Mirage is very easy to use, so you may not even need to uh, consult these videos, but they're there if you need them. And then we have a gallery tab, which has a number of different animations that you can click through and see how a photo has been turned into an animation for inspiration. We plan to populate uh, this gallery with user images, so we encourage you to share your animations that you create with Photo Mirage with us, and then we can put them in this space and also on our website uh, to show them off with the world. All right, so there are three ways to bring in an image into Photo Mirage. You can simply drag and drop an image from your computer into the working area here. You can click on open within the workspace, or you can go to file, new or open, and that's gonna bring up your system. Select an image, I'm bringing in a JPEG image here, and the image, uh, the images or the file formats we support that you can import are JPEG, bitmap, PNG, TIFF, or raw images. So basically all the major file formats are covered. And when you turn this image into an animation, you can export it as a WMV, MP4, or an animated GIF, meaning your image is gonna play nearly anywhere. So now that we've got our image in, the first tool you're likely gonna use is motion arrows here. Um, if you hover over the different icons, you're gonna see a little tool tip that's gonna point out what the tool is actually called. Very helpful for when you're first starting out. Um, and you get your motion arrows by clicking on the animation tool icon, which is represented by this little paper plane. As you can see, I launched for the first time and they're already toggled on. So it makes it very helpful for you to be able to get started and know which tool to use right away. So I don't need to click on the motion arrow because it's already on by default. All I'm doing here is I'm clicking, dragging, and releasing motion arrows on top of the part of the image I want to animate. So I want to animate these clouds going from right to left on the sky and just with my mouse clicking, dragging, and dropping. And then the second step is using anchor points to keep image areas still. So I'm gonna click on the anchor points icon and all I'm doing is I'm clicking along the horizon around the photographer's head here, just clicking with my mouse to plot these anchor points so that everything below this line of anchor points stays still because we want the photographer and all the land to stay still. And then because we have those motion arrows up here, which is what um, the tool we use to create the motion or the animation, everything above the sky is going to move. Step three is clicking play. So it's just a quick, simple three-step process. Play is found at the bottom of your user interface here. And you'll be able to watch your image turn into an animation. So one thing I do wanna say is we know that with the go-to webinar, Sometimes what you're seeing and what we're actually seeing is a little bit different and delayed. Um, with our experience, we've noticed that some of the final outputs when we press play or we go to output or animation is it looks a little bit choppy through the GoToWebinar platform. So if that's what you're experiencing, I do um, definitely encourage you afterwards to go to photomirage.io, look at some of our examples of animations or you know try it out for yourself with our trial and see what you can create. But I'm seeing a really nice smooth transition of these clouds moving from right to left on my screen. Now to stop, uh, your play button turns into stop when you're in play mode. So I'm just gonna click stop. And now I'm back in my edit mode here. And what 
What's really cool about Photo Mirage is you can continue to edit and perfect, and it's a lot of fun in doing so. So one of the tools that you can use to change up your animation is the speed slider. I'm going to move this to a, speed, a faster speed here and then play again just to give you an idea of um, what the clouds look like when they're sped up a bit. Now, I think on this image, it's more natural for clouds to move a little bit slower. However, sometimes speeding up um, your animation really adds impact. So it's totally up to you to play to your heart's desire and find the right speed. The next tool I want to show you is the mask tool. Now, when you click on these tools up top, you're noticing that um, the content below changes, right? So we had animation tools on by default where we found our motion arrows and anchor points. When we click on mask, we then have um, mask options that we can play with. So what the mask does is it brushes, or, yeah, brushes over the areas of the image you don't want to animate. And you've got the ability to control the brush size and the feather. And the, what the feather does is it allows you to create a soft transition between the part of the image that's going to stay still and the part of the image that's going to animate. We have two different brush tips. We have a round brush and a square brush. So let me just show you what those look like before I start painting over anything on my image. Here is a round brush with no feather. Here is a square brush with no feather. Now let's bump the feather up to 100% and show you how that looks different. Square brush with full feather and round brush with full feather. So it gives you an idea whether you want hard lines. And I'm going to show you an example of an image where you would want to use zero feather a little bit later. And on this image, um, it's going to allow us to not have to go right along the edge of the mountains here in the photographer's head. We can go outside of the lines a little bit as we paint our mask on. The next um, option you have here is called remove from mask. So by default, we have add to mask on because we just applied a mask by clicking. But if you click on remove from mask, if you make a mistake when you're using the mask tool, you can easily remove from your mask. Or in the per for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to remove the examples there that I was um, showing you. And now I'm going to actually paint over the, arrow, uh, the area of the image I want to keep still by clicking back on Add from Mask and just clicking and dragging. And you can see that we're getting this red mask applied over top. But because the mask is an alternative to using anchor points, we don't need both. So I'm going to show you the next tool here, which is the Selection tool or Select tool which will allow me to grab multiple elements and it will grab both motion arrows and anchor points um, to be able to manipulate them or delete them. So I'm just going to click the delete icon here and it's going to remove those anchor points that I previously plotted. But that allows you to do it with a rectangular marquee. And I didn't want to grab these last two because they were pretty close to this motion arrow and I didn't want to pick it up as well. So then we also have the freehand select tool which allows you to draw an organic shape around elements of your uh, Photo Mirage project to select them in case you are very close to elements that you don't want to delete or manipulate. So I'll click delete, get rid of that. Now we have a mask applied. You can see I went pretty high there because I have a feather. I'm not too worried about um, the hardness of my transition because I've got the soft feather. And let's see what my photo animation looks like with the mask. So you can see very similar effect to with anchor points. Um, what we wanted to keep still, what we painted over with the mask is still, and our clouds are animated. Now there's no reason why you can't use both anchor points and a mask. On some projects you might be animating multiple um, areas of your image and also isolating multiple areas of your image. It really just depends what method works best for you. I prefer to use anchor points. However, if I'm working on a very tedious or advanced project where I'm plotting a lot of anchor points, I might choose to use a mask so I'm not doing as much clicking. So with that said, let's open up a new image. Now this might be a recognizable image to you. 
This is a draw user artwork image by Michael Milkowski, a really great image. Um, and this just goes to show that it doesn't just need to be a photograph that you animate. As long as you're bringing it into one of the file formats or importing it as one of the file formats I previously mentioned, an image file format, you're going to be able to animate just about anything. So I'm going to go back to my animation tools and just preview those three simple steps again by applying some motion arrows over the water here. To get our water going, this time we're going to go from left to right. I'm going to use some anchor points to draw somewhat of a circle around where I put the motion arrows. So we're closing them in, which is a bit different to what we did in the previous example. And now everything within those anchor points, because we have the motion arrows inside them, is going to move when I hit play. And you can see we've got some movement. Again, you can play with speed. But what I want to show you now is if there's something that you're not completely happy with, and I didn't really like the way that um, the water was pulling here, you can use your motion arrow tool to manipulate motion arrows. So if you click on the start point of a motion arrow and then drag it, you're going to be able to lengthen your arrow, move your arrow, reposition your arrow from that point. You can also click on the end point or the arrowhead and do the same thing. And then, of course, you can preview again and see if the change you made um, has been effective and if you're happy with it. If you click on the middle of the arrow, you're able to move the entire arrow as long as you're, you've got the arrow selected. Okay. Also, if you click delete mode when you're in the animation tools, um, you're able to just click on motion arrows or anchor points to delete them one by one. There we go. Now if you over delete and you want to go back to something you had before, of course you have undo options and you can undo up to a hundred times as well as redo options. Now there's keyboard commands for pretty much everything in Photo Mirage. So if you hover over anything long enough, you're going to see that tooltip. Here's a good example, animation, and you see in brackets M. If you hit M, you're going to invoke your animation tool directly without having to use your cursor. Same with mask. B will bring up your mask immediately without having to use your cursor. Um, and then, of course, you've got your undo and redo are your um, traditional control Z and your control V as you're used to from word processing programs and others. Okay, so moving on, um, we're going to look at another example of digital artwork. Now this is something submitted from Android Jones who is a painter user, Corel painter user. And I want to show you this one because we're going to add animation into multiple areas. I'm also going to show you zoom and pan in this example. So I definitely want to isolate parts of Shiva here. And I want to animate parts around him and some of the stuff that's going on here around his arms. So here I'm isolating his torso and his head. Um, I'm going to isolate this part of his arm. Now what's great about Photo Mirage is it blurs the line between photo and video. Uh, so people look at it and they're like, well, it's not quite a photo, but it's not a video either. They're not really sure what's going on and it kind of transfixes them and makes them stop and think a little bit longer, which is great if you're competing for attention in a digital landscape, like if you're managing a blog or social media assets or um, trying to garner attention for your portfolio of artwork or whatever it is, uh, definitely people stop and they stare a little bit longer. And it's so much easier to create than video too because everybody has tons of photos or artwork that they can animate. Video is a bit harder to create. So I've isolated what I wanted to isolate. Now I'm going to add some motion arrows around here. Let's grab a few more anchor points. We're going to put some motion in here, lots of motion in the galaxy or sky we've got in the background. And you can see I'm zooming in and out. I'm using my mouse cursor to do so, 
But we have a number of Zoom tools. Uh, just undo that. We have a number of Zoom tools down at the bottom here. You can zoom using a slider. And then, of course, you can use the um, scroll bars on the sides to scroll to the area you're working on. We have a zoom to fit, which is going to fit the image within the working area. And we have zoom to 100%, which is going to zoom to 100% of that initial image size that you brought in. And we have a pan tool. Now with pan, you click and hold, and then you're gonna see this um, rectangle, and that will help you pan to the particular area that's within the rectangle. So I wanted to pan into this little circle thing that's going on on his hand here because I'm gonna add some animation, uh, some motion arrows, sorry, in a circular motion in here. We've got anchor points around it to isolate. Now let's add some motion through here. A little bit more motion, maybe here as well. And we'll see what this final animation looks like. All right, so you can see that I've effectively animated this galaxy in the background. You can also see that there's some motion happening around his um, arm here and here. And it's hard to see, but there's motion happening in here as well. Let's scroll back in and take a look a little bit more closely. You can play when you're zoomed in, as you can see. I'm zoomed in to a point where this is actually quite pixelated, though, so it's hard to see the motion happening, but it is happening. And one thing to note, too, is if you have very small motion arrows, uh, it's going to appear that things are moving slower than if you have longer motion arrows. All right, so next I'm going to bring in a finished example, um, a finished project that we previously created. This is a Corel Paint Shop Pro user artwork. His name is Malcolm Dixon, who submitted this. Um, and we've put the animation points and the motion arrows on it to isolate different areas of the image. So you can see that we've isolated the sky, then added motion in the sky. We've isolated the water, added motion in the water, isolated the boats, isolated the house and the reflection of the house. And I'll press play quickly. And this one I think is really impactful. It looks really great. Um, so it's just a, a quick example of another way where you can have both clouds and water animated at once and going in slightly different directions. New image here, this time we're going to look at a lion's face. And I'm going to, again, I'm demoing, as you can see, the same three tools for the most part. But what's unique about this demonstration from the others you've already seen is I don't have a need to plot any anchor points or a mask over the black background of this image because there's no image data there, it's just black. So how uh, these motion arrows work is they're pulling pixels from an area behind the start point um, that I plot first and sort of in a triangular grid behind it. So it's going to push these pixels across, but because there's nothing in behind to also move, um, it's going to be a great effect and we don't have to worry about it. But let's say this lion had a park behind him or a waterfall behind him, if we didn't put motion arrow or sorry, anchor points around to isolate the area where the motion arrows are, then you're probably going to see some of that waterfall or the background with the park example also be moved a little bit, which is not the intended effect you're looking for. What I am going to do is just isolate his face because we don't want that to start pulling. And I'm going to isolate around his ear as well. and press play and you can see we've animated fur fairly successfully now i hope you're noticing by now that it does not take very long to create a photo animation and to create a photo animation that looks pretty great and i'm not saying mine look awesome i would definitely go back and make a few edits or adjustments if um, i had more time and wasn't doing a webinar to try to perfect my work but 
in the 30 seconds, if that, that it took me to create this, I think it's um, pretty good output. And I don't have a ton of experience either, so it is easy to just get in there and, and uh, be able to create something like this just with a little bit of guesswork. All right, so next couple of tools we have along the top that we haven't showed you yet, we have Smart Photo Fix. Smart Photo Fix allows you, by clicking Apply, to automatically adjust brightness, saturation, sharpness, and white balance of the image so that you don't, if you have an image that maybe isn't perfect and you'd want to do some photo editing on it um, prior just to make the color a little bit better, uh, you can do that. You don't have to use a photo editor to do that. You can do that right in Photo Mirage or at least see if you like the effect of the Smart Photo Fix. So that lightened this image up a bit, a bit. But if you don't like the effect, you can always undo. Next, we've got, got Crop. Crop allows you to trim unwanted areas from your image so that when you go to preview or export, you're not going to see the, uh, the trimmed areas. In Crop, you have a number of different preset options. You have options for popular social and sharing sites because we already know the optimal size that those sites want. So we take the guesswork out of it for you and you can crop. If you know you're, you're gonna crop to upload to Facebook, choose the Facebook um, crop preset and you're gonna be ready to go. We also have original proportions, which will allow you to uh, hold the aspect ratio of the original image you brought in, but of course you can um, still trim unwanted areas. Or you have freeform. Freeform has no constraints on proportions, so you can crop exactly as you wish. And then there's a number of um, other options, ratios, and dimensions that you can pick from, from that are popular video um, dimensions as well as photo dimensions. And now I'm gonna move into export because crop and export have an important relationship that I'd like to explain. When you're thinking about cropping an image, you wanna be thinking about where you wanna export it for. So my example of Facebook, if you click Facebook and crop, when you click on export, which is represented by this icon down here at the bottom of your user interface, you're automatically going to um, go to the Facebook export option. Now, of course, you can click off of it and click on to another export option, but Photo Mirage has some smarts built into it, and it knows you cropped for Facebook, you likely want to export to Facebook. And we have the, because it's a preset, we have the image dimensions locked down. As I said, we know the optimal size for Facebook, what they're looking for. We also know the optimal animation loop duration. So it takes all the guesswork out of it for you. Um, if we go back and we choose either original proportions or free form. Let's just change this up a little bit here. Then when we go to export, we're gonna be brought into the custom export option, okay, where you can choose your file type, GIF, MP4, WMV, frame rate, quality, also image size. However, the image size that's gonna be selected by default is going to be the closest image ratio to what you selected in crop. Now, if you don't choose to crop at all, um, you could find yourself in the custom export option and also it will choose the closest ratio to what the original image size you brought in was because we have a number of options, uh, preset options on export to choose from for video and there might not be an exact match to the image size or to the free form crop that you um, have chosen. However, you're gonna get the next best thing. So that's when this size image to fill frame um, tick box becomes important. So by default, it's ticked on. What that means is if you don't have an exact match of your crop or your original image to the export option that you're picking um, in terms of dimensions. So let's say, uh, to put it into context, you crop to portrait, but you want to export to landscape. Well, portrait and landscape are quite different. Um, it's not going, portrait is not going to fit nicely into a landscape export option. So with size to fill frame, what it's going to do is it's from the center of your image, there's going to be some clipping that occurs because it's going to size from the center of the image to fill the entire frame of your export dimension. If you click it off, then what it's gonna do is it's going to keep your entire image as portrait within a landscape 
um, export to video, but you're going to see black bars on the sides. So just keep that in mind because that's important. Of course, you can um, play with it to your heart's content, see what it looks like after you press OK and you export, and decide what's the best fit for you. Uh, so also in custom, you have control over animation loop duration from 3 seconds to 30 seconds. As I said, um, you've got options for frame rate and quality as well. As you change some of these settings, you'll notice the estimated file size changes as well, which is um, great help if you're working within a specific file size restriction. And so you can see here that we have um, preset options for a number of different social and sharing sites. We also have a gallery option. And this is a preset too, so it has locked animation loop duration, width and height. Um, however, what this is, is this is actually our Photo Mirage user gallery, um, which is hosted on the Corel Discovery Center. So you can share your images with us um, by choosing this option and then clicking on this link, share to the Photo Mirage user gallery. You log in and upload your image, and then that will be hosted within two business days once we approve it uh, on the Discovery Center. From there, we can then take it and we can put it on our photomirage.io website, or we can put it in our welcome guide that I was showing you before. So if you want to share what you're creating with us, please do. We love um, user artwork, user content. We want to see what, how you can animate your illustrations and uh, digital designs. OK, so if you click OK, you're going to go to the Save As dialog or the Save dialog. Um, I do want to stress that if you're going to choose Export, you also want to Save As. Save As from the File menu here will enable you to save your project file, as in the case of the Norway image I brought in, where we had the clouds and the water animated with the house on the lake and the boats. That was a previously saved project file. Our native file format is a CPM file. You can open a CPM file and edit it as much as you'd like. It's non-destructive, so you can always go back and make changes to a previously saved project. So please remember to save, because once you export and you don't save, you will not be able to go back and edit um, a project file. All right, so that brings me to my next image. Again, this is a previously saved project file. And this one has all the elements um, of all the tools of Photo Mirage already built in. So we have a mask, we have some anchor points here and some motion arrows, and we have crop. And I just want to talk to you about visibility layers with this one. Because this is quite a complicated project, or at least it looks it, with so many motion arrows and so much masking going on. Um, and I want to show you what the original looked like. So I can do that using visibility layers. Those visibility layers allow you to toggle on and off certain elements of your Photo Mirage project to get a better look at what you're working on um, when you're in editing mode. So I'm just going to click on the animation markers, which are your motion arrows and your anchor points layer, to turn them off or to hide them rather. And now you can see, okay, this looks like a staircase um, once they're off. I'm going to click on crop and what that does is it doesn't remove your crop box instead it removes the area that you intend to trim to give you an idea of what your project is going to look like when you go to play or export i'm going to click on mask which is going to toggle off the mask and here you can see the original image we started with now i can also click the image layer off and i can turn everything else back on and this might help you when you're editing. If you're finding that the color of the motion arrows or anchor points are competing with the background image and you want to see you know, where you may have missed somewhere on your mask or where you're missing an anchor point or motion arrow, it's very helpful to use uh, these visibility layers while editing. All right, so now that you know what our original image looked like and how visibility layers work, I just want to play this and show you how we turned a staircase into something that resembles more of an escalator and you'll see how that crop works too there it's cropped out that unwanted area so looks all right now this one's a bit more complicated than anything i've demoed um, on screen for you today but honestly this maybe took me seven minutes instead of 30 seconds so imagine what you can do if you dedicate a whole half hour it can be pretty impressive 
something you're probably wondering about this is how did you animate a curve with straight motion arrows? We well, use the same tool, it's just a number of different motion arrows on top of one another following the curve of the staircase. Okay, that's all it is. So, one thing you need to know though is if you are plotting your motion arrows on top of one another, what's, what the motion arrow tool is going to want to do is it's going to want to actually select the anchor head of the one that you're clicking over top of so that you can grab it, manipulate it, delete it, whatever. That's not what you want to have happen. So as you're drawing them, if you hold down the space bar, which I'm doing and I know you can't see, that will allow you to draw them one on top of another versus if I don't hold down the space bar, now look what happened. I just actually grabbed the motion arrow and I elongated it, which was not what I wanted to do. So space bar is an important tip to know uh, when you're doing a little bit more of a complicated photo mirage animation involving curves. I'm just undoing here with control Z. And um, yeah, that's a, that's a very different example to anything you've seen. Um, I love it. I think it looks great and it's a lot of fun to just get into the thick of it and it Takes a little bit of time, but man whenever you see the results, it's really exciting All right next image. I'm going to bring in Another example of a digital design Now this is a painter user artwork here a nice painting that's being done in Corel painter I'm going to show you how we can animate hair because we've seen how to animate fur, galaxy, sky, and water already. Uh, but there's other things you can do like fabric and fire. Hair animates um, usually exceptionally well. Um, we like the results, so let's see what you think here. So just going to go along her face here with some anchor points. Make sure we get the branch out of the way. Again, there's not too much image data in the background here to worry about, so I'm not going to completely isolate all around her hair, but I think that tree branch um, I might want to isolate. And then I'm going to take my motion arrows and just drag them over her hair and see what we get. So it doesn't look too bad. I don't like what's happening up here, but again, the beauty of photo mirage. Let's figure out why. Play again. So, across the top, we haven't talked about the menu we have across the top. We have a file menu, and we did mention a number of these um, items within the file menu, new or open. You can also open recent files. We've got save and save as, which is best practice. You can also access export. Remember the export icon that's down here can also be accessed from the file menu. And I didn't talk about export to email. That's this little um, envelope down here. So you can either access that from the file menu or from the bottom of the user interface, which allows you to email your animation as an embedded image, or animation rather, um, or attach it to an email. You can switch your language from the file menu and of course close Photo Mirage. Then we have the user interface menu. Now this is where you can choose your color theme to work in. So we've been staring at the midnight black um, color theme, but we also have one called Arctic Silver, which is a much lighter look. There you go, we just changed that. So completely up to you, you can switch it up, whatever you prefer to work in, we like to give you options. In help, we've got a lot of helpful content um, to help you with Photo Mirage. However, I hope from what you're taking away from this webinar is that Photo Mirage is exceptionally easy and hopefully you won't have to access these um, materials that we've prepared for you. But we do have an online help file. We've got a comprehensive user guide, video tutorials, and keyboard shortcuts. Uh, keyboard shortcuts might be one that will be helpful to reference if you want to work quickly. Um, welcome, that's going to bring up that welcome guide that I showed you initially in case you want to um, get inspiration or watch a tutorial while you're working. And I think that pretty much concludes my demo of Photo Mirage.